Today in this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate uh, balance ligamentous tension for the cervical spine. We're going to start with the OA, then move to AA, and then C2 to C7. So first, let's uh, quickly obtain our diagnosis and then move into the technique. So uh, for the OA, I'm making my contacts uh, with my middle and ring fingers um, on the occiput index fingers at the uh, C1 transverse processes, and I'm going to translate to induce some side bending at the OA. And as I translate, I find that I have a freedom of motion of translation to the left and a restriction of motion with translation to the right, which suggests a uh, side bending preference to the right and rotation preference uh, to the left. And as I move that occiput and try to translate it, I can confirm that. Now I'm going to recheck that in flexion, recheck it in extension. And in extension, I feel um, the restriction is more pronounced. And with flexion, try to relax your neck. In flexion, I feel that that um, asymmetry resolves and it's more symmetrical. So that makes my OA diagnosis, uh, OA flexed side bent to the right, rotated to the left. So for Balance segmentous tension for the OA, there are a couple different things to uh, keep in mind with any balance segmentous tension technique. Uh, one of the important aspects of balance segmentous tension is to try to disengage whatever that segment is. Um, and most often that's caused or that's, um, that is done by some sort of compression or distraction. So now with the OA, what I'm, what I'm going to do is um, make contact with C1, keep that contact there, and I'm going to kind of draw my, um, my hands inferiorly to add a little bit of compression at the OA joint, um, just enough uh, just to disengage that joint. Then I'm going to induce a little bit of side bending um, towards the freedom, so side bending to the right, and I'm only going to go as far as I decrease tension. If I go too far, then I would start to increase tension again. I'm trying to find the point uh, in side bending to the right where I have the greatest balanced tension. In addition to side bending to the right, I'm also going to rotate slightly to the left just until I find that balance point. I also want to induce some flexion since that was the uh, motion preference for the OA. And, I'm, and at each uh, range of motion, I'm trying to find that point of balance. Once I've achieved that point of balance, I'm going to hold it and after some time, somewhere between 15 and 30 seconds, I will feel um, some kind of tissue texture change. That's not uh, an indication that the, that the change has completely occurred. Uh, instead, it indicates the start of the change. And I want to hold in that position, that position of balanced tension, um, and appreciate the changes in tissue texture, the changes in tension. I might feel increased warmth. Um, uh, increased pulsations that uh, suggest increased um, circulation in the area. And as I'm holding here, I feel those changes. I maintain that position. And those changes have now stopped. And I'm going to return the patient back to neutral position and then reassess my uh, OA translation. And I do find that I have improved range of motion at the OA. Now for AA, I'm making a similar contact, but instead of translating the OA, instead I'm gonna be making contact with the AA. Now there's two ways to kind of think of the AA when it comes to balancing mentis tension. Uh, one of them is uh, to think of um, the primary motion of the AA, which is rotation. The other is to think of the atlas as this ring above the above um, C2 and its dens. And uh, one way that you're able to um, change the tension on the atlas is to simply translate it slightly. Alternatively, you could uh, rotate that atlas on top of um, the axis. So we're going to make contact at um, C1 transverse processes, and then our middle fingers are going to be down uh, towards C2. And we're going to induce a little bit of compression, again, drawing our hands inferiorly, and on camera it's uh, 
very minute, so you may not see too much, um, just until I have some disengagement of the AA. And then I can approach it one of two ways. Either I can translate that uh, C1 slightly to the left or slightly to the right, or I can rotate it. So there is a preference of rotation to the left, which suggests the diagnosis of AA rotated left. So with compression and then some rotation, I can find my balance point in this direction at this point here. Now I can wait here again and wait for signs that tissue texture changes are occurring, uh, which would be pulsations, tissue texture change, um, increased warmth, and a change in the tension or a balance point. And as I hold it here, still maintaining that compression, that very slight compression, I now feel that the change has completed. So I return her back to neutral and then reassess that rotation. And there is already improved uh, rotation to the right. Um, I could alternatively um, apply some translation at uh, C1 transverse processes and repeat the same uh, procedure. Okay, now moving down to C2 to C7, uh, first I'm gonna establish my diagnosis. So, check a few segments, translation, and coming back up to C3, I find that I have a preference in translation to the right, which suggests side bending to the left, and I can confirm uh, that with also adding some rotation to the left and rotation to the right, um, coupled with that side bending. And I do find that at C3, uh, I have a pre preference in side bending to the left and rotation to the left. Now I can retest that in flexion and in extension. And in extension, I find that there's greater restriction present. In flexion, I find that I have better symmetry of motion, which suggests that C3 is flexed side bent to the left, rotated to the left. Now, to uh, perform balancing momentous tension here, I have a, a number of ways that I can approach it. Uh, one uh, method is to apply some um, compression for disengagement. So uh, my compression would be longitudinal down to my patient's feet, and that would be slightly moving my uh, hands inferiorly to add some compression from C3 on top of C4. Alternatively, I could induce some distraction, which will help to disengage as well. Um, another method is to uh, use one hand to contact the segment below and induce uh, the opposite directions of motion. So since I have um, a preference of motion in um, left side bending, I can induce um, some translation to the left at the below segment, which can help to isolate motion to uh, C3. What I'm gonna do in this uh, case is I'm going to add a little bit of compression. So bring my hands closer down towards her feet um, and also um, press uh, anteriorly. And then I'm gonna induce a little bit of side bending to the left, rotation to the left, just until I find uh, a balance point. And then I also wanna include my flexion or extension. So with a little bit of flexion, that's where I find a great balance point. So now that I'm at this balance point, just like I've been doing for the other techniques um, or for the other areas, I'm waiting to appreciate uh, tissue texture changes, pulsations, and changes in tension. And as I'm sitting here and waiting, I do feel those things. And the tension is softening. Some of the landmarks also feel as if they're softening as the muscle tension and ligamentous tension changes. And those changes are still happening and the softening is still happening. Okay, so now that those changes have stopped and the tissue texture um, uh, corrections have completed. I'm going to return that segment back to neutral 
and again test translation and I find that I have uh, improvement of range of motion in both directions. And that completes the technique.